Hi, I'm Dennis Rude with Cathedral Stone. We get asked a lot about changing colors on site, blending on site. So I thought I'd do a little instructional video and show you how I do it. I've done it a million times on site. And there are two or three different ways to do it. I'm going to show you the first one right now. We have stain kits just for this purpose. Sometimes repairs don't match. They vary from one stone to or the stones vary. They'll match one stone, not another. So you have to fix that. And a lot of times we get asked to redo the color samples. It takes too long. It takes us a week or two to do that. It's faster if you do it on site. Here's how we do it. Different things can cause the color to be different. This is a brownstone sample. Used, the same mix was used on all of these samples here. But the amount of water used varied. The more water you add to any patching material, any mortar, lightens the color. So there can be nothing wrong with this color. It's just that somebody used too much water. Or they finished it too soon. That'll, that will cause this problem as well. That's why our instructions are what they are. Just let this sit for a little and scrape it off. That's how you get that color. But if somebody's using too much water or they're finishing too soon, it can change the color. Even higher humidity from one day to the next can change colors. So you need to adjust those. This is another example of a limestone finished too soon or smoothed with the trowel. You can see the original color here. Same thing here. This is just finishing. Nothing wrong with the mortar, but you might want to change the color to make it blend better. The easiest way to do that is to use a stain kit. We have these for brownstone. Six colors that come with it. That's all you need to make about any color you want. We have another stain kit for concrete and limestone and a third one for other sandstones. You get these colors. These will have numbers on them. We have a red and a brown and a black here. When you get this in the stain kit, these will have numbers because there's more shades of red than one. There are more shades of brown. So pay attention to the numbers. You'll get some measuring spoons, a sponge. We always use sponges to apply stains because brushes leave streaks sometimes. A measuring cup and a tablet to use on site because you need to record what you're doing here. I'm going to use it here. I'm going to put the, the uh, formulas that we develop here so that you can see it better. But everybody on site should have one of these. It comes with a stain kit. Make sure they get used. And here's the way I start. Whatever the bottom measurement is on the measuring cup that you get, they vary. This is an eighth of a cup. It's also 25 milliliters or three, one ounce. I'm going to go with the 25 milliliters. That's my starting point. One of the most difficult things is getting people on site to actually write things down, but they need to do that. So formula one or mix one is 25 milliliters of silicate. So if we're going to want to change this color to this color, I get asked a lot about what a formula is. I can't give you a formula. It depends on the absorption, depends on the humidity that day, depends on a lot of things. So you need to do this yourself on site. So if you're going to change this color to this, it's common sense. What would you use? Brown? I would. And I always start off with a small amount, quarter teaspoon typically. Take the brown, add it to the silicate, stir it up. I'm going to take this off. Make it a little easier.
That's going to be stain number one. Take the sponge. Let's mark this first. Number one is this one. If you can see that, I'm just going to stain this much. We're going to have to put a lot of them on here. We'll make a variety of them and let them dry and then choose the closest one. We use the liquids now. We used to use powdered pigments, but the powder is heavy and it settles. So you get mixed results with it. This is, this is consistent. It's number one. I'll clean this sponge. The nice thing about this is we don't have to start over. We'll adjust this one. So what, what's next? To get this closer to the color, either more brown, maybe some black. So I think what we'll do is record that one. That's a quarter teaspoon of brown. You will use the number of that brown that we'll include on the container. That's number one. Number two, it's the same thing, and you have to go through this process. 25 milliliters of silicate. Guys on the site don't like to do this. They don't want to slow down. But if you don't keep these records, you won't be able to reproduce it. When you figure out which one of these matches, you need to make a half a gallon or a gallon of it, you need these measurements. So again, quarter teaspoon of brown. I'm going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of black. The black is powerful and it will overpower the mix if you put too much. We're, we're starting out with a weak mix and we're going to get progressively more, uh, progressively stronger. So here's the, here's the big bonus. As so I said, we don't have to start over. We just go to the black. Yeah. This is what you get in a stain kit. This is enough it could stain a pretty good sized building with, it, with this much material. And what this is, is our actual potassium silicate coating that we're diluting. If you make a mistake with this, you have some time where you can wash it out with a sponge and start over if you need to. And the nice thing about silicate too is it cleans up with water. So you can, it's no big mess like oil paints used to be. So here's our mix number two. I do these on site also. You can do it directly on the stone. The area that's going to be cut out and patched, you can, you can put your samples on there beforehand and um, figure out what's going to work before you need to go through all this. But I find it better to do it on site. The light's more natural. You're out there where you need to be. You've got the air to help dry it, sunlight. So right now, you don't see too much difference. Like I said, you see it where it's starting to dry here. In my experience, when you start out with a, a weak mix like this, this will dry and, it, and you probably won't see it. You may get into the third, fourth, fifth, or, or sixth before you start to see the color because you're adding more pigment. The little bit of pigment that we have here will dry and go away usually. Uh, so we're, we're getting stronger as we go. This is number two.
and now number three. And we're just guessing here. It's, I don't have a formula. You won't either. You just have to experiment. This is a way to work into these colors without overpowering it and having it back up. So you'll work, work up to what you want. Um, what should we do for the next color? I think I'll add If you're smart enough and have a better memory than mine, maybe you don't have to write 25 milliliters on there all the time, but I just do. Um, now, if we want to change this and make it, I think, a little more brown and a little more black to build up that pigment, let's change this to half teaspoon. Brown. Again, you're going to write these numbers in, or your people on the scalpel are going to write these numbers in here. And I'm going to increase the black to a quarter teaspoon now. Here's the brown. We're going to add another quarter teaspoon. And another eighth teaspoon of black. And apply it. By the way, don't use this any potassium silicate in direct sunlight. It dries so fast you'll see streaks no matter what you do. So try to work in the shade. I can start to see the pigment building up on the surface here. We mark that as number three. So this is this is turning out I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's looking better already, but compared to this one, we'll see. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe the first one will be the right one. But I'll make some variations, and we'll let them dry and see what they look like. This is number three. Let's do a fourth one. What's on for the fourth one? What's going to help this? Number four. 25 milliliters. So right now we're at a half teaspoon of brown, quarter teaspoon of black. I think some red maybe. We'll try red. So write this down. We're going to stick with a half teaspoon of brown. One quarter teaspoon of black. and one-eighth teaspoon 
red. We'll put that on and let it dry. We'll come back and look at these later on this afternoon. Sometimes if you want these to look a little bit more like milk chocolate, you can add green and yellow together. That mellows that quite a bit. Okay, number four. Okay, let's let these dry. We'll come back to these after they've dried for a little while. On site, when you're on site using potassium silicate, the instructions, general instructions are to work ahead of the sun. Don't apply this material to a hot sun-baked surface. Three o'clock in the afternoon on the west side of the building is not a good thing because you'll see every roller mark, every brush stroke, whatever you do. This can also be sprayed, but just try to work ahead of the sun. It solves a lot of problems. On site, it's really fast drying, really fast. Uh, much faster than this. We're inside, it's a stain rather than a paint, but outside, work ahead of the sun. Stay out of the direct sun or hot stone. So we let these dry, we'll come back and take a look at them and see if we need to adjust them more. Thanks for watching. Okay, welcome back. It's been about two hours now since we left these wet let them, to let them dry some. Now you can see the difference that the stain has made. This is number one here, first one we started with, two, three, and four. Which one looks the best? A trick question. They all look good. We have all chosen which one we like the best and it's unanimous funny thing is number one number one was the best choice when you're choosing colors it's against the law not really it's against our law to check it from this distance this is not good the normal distance for viewing Something for color acceptance is 12 to 20 feet. That's what the paint industry says. We say the same thing. We took these, we, we selected one in here, the one we all like the best. Then we took them outside in natural light. It was still number one. You see the difference on the ones that we didn't stain, the ones we started with. Number four is where we added red. The red didn't do anything. Took it too far off. Number one, where we only added brown, is the one that everybody chose. Now we have a record. Now you know they've dried sufficiently to make a choice. And if you look, sorry, it's number one on the bottom. This is one, two, and three. You do it this way. One, two, and three. They're close. If they still need to be adjusted some, you can add more colors. You can make a fourth one, fifth one, whatever you want. You can add more and tweak it all you want. What we find with the more pigment we add, the more it starts to look like a coating. We're trying to make it look like a stain. So we think that on most projects, any of the three of these would be sufficient. So go back to your formula. Then you can take this, let's say it's this one. Make whatever you want. Start out with 500 milliliters of fixed, um, sorry, silicate. And then multiply this quarter by the same amount. So you have the same ratio, you can make a gallon jug of it. 
or uh, whatever you think you might need. And you may need more than one color. You can, you can make variations on these. If you have different colors of stone, you can have as many stains as you want. So hope that's helpful. We're going to do the next one on uh, mortar matching on site. Thanks for watching.